is Tony Reed with Rattle in the Cage for Tap Out MMA Worldwide Magazine. Here with Stitch, the world famous, iconic cut man, Jacob Duran. I'm sure you all know him. Needs no introduction. Uh, we're here in Philly for UFC 133 tonight. Kind of just sitting around, hanging out. We'll have some little interview here quick. We'll jump into some questions if that's okay. Um, so, what rap do fighters request more, the knockout rap or the tap out rap? Ah, uh, good question. Nobody ever asked that. But, you know, surprisingly enough, um, uh, the knockout rap. Everybody yeah. wants a knockout rap because the way it's designed, I, I, they can do both. They can grapple, plus, you know, they have that assurance that they can go over there and crack somebody's head. And, <laughs> and, and hopefully, you know, with all possibility, you know, there's no injuries. Uh, but the knockout rap is a good thing. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, the phrase one more round might be as significant or as fitting when it comes to you as anyone in the sport. Can you talk about the ability that you have the, the the ability you have to give that fighter one more round where it could possibly save a fight, even save a career in some cases? Well, I've done that, Tony. And, and yeah, you know, I love the, the phrase one more round, and that was unfortunately with my old sponsor that, you know, Mark, Mark's a great guy. So we'll but, you know, something else. We'll yeah, say. well, no, I, I, I like the one more Five round. Five more minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, but, but one more round is fine because that's, that's what I do, right? And, and, and that, you know, first of all, was created because when Rocky Balboa was in that movie, Rocky Balboa, that I was part of, right? Actually, I didn't know, but Mark Zucker, the, the owner of the company, saw it and realized that, you know what, everybody in life has to go through one more round, and, and that's how he created the one more round clothing franchise and, and, and brought me on board. But that's significant of what I do because my job is to give that fighter that one more round. And, and I think I've done that many times with a lot of fighters. And, and you know, I was talking to Eddie Alvarez last night, and I said, you know, it's not uncommon for a fighter to come and give me a hug, give me a kiss on the cheek and say, Stitch, I love you. You know, and, and that comes heartfelt because of what I've been to the table for them. And, and, and you know, there's, there's nothing sissy in this and that. It's quite manly, actually. Uh, but to me, it's a whole lot of respect. But like my children, tell me, yeah. so I got to take care of them. Absolutely, absolutely. And kind of along those lines, you said that wrapping hands is kind of like putting the armor on the gladiators before they went to battle in you know, ancient times. Um, what's the most significant or most memorable rap job you've ever done? Is there a story you can share as far as one that kind of stands out? Uh, well, no, you know, there's tough to get you. That's, man, you're asking some good questions. You didn't sleep uh, shit. I should be getting paid for this. Yeah, well, they, these, are, these are very good questions. <laughs> Michelle, you got yourself a good man. He has, he has a, lot of, a lot of high inspirations, but, uh, but you know, there's, there's been a lot of good raps, and, and guys come up to me and and, well, let's talk about Misha Tate just the other day when she fought the first time I wrapped her hands. And, and, and she requested me because I had uh, Marcus Cohen and I said, all right, well, I'll wrap her hands. Because if they give me five guys on at two and eight, it's tough for me to say no, right? So I said, all right, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put her into my schedule and I'll wrap her hands. And because I'm wrapping her hands for the first time, I said, you know, I said, I've wrapped this with every great fighter in MMA and, and it's nice to have you. Is, you know, one of the people I've read. Fraternity. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she got all excited and she said, well, Stitch, can you sign them for me? I've never signed a rap, you know, before they go out to battle. And, and, and so I did, you know, have a blast, you know, and the fight signed them. And she ended up winning the fight and she said, Stitch, I'm going to put these on. on, on, on uh, yeah, well, no, yeah, 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 she's, yeah, she's going she's gonna to put them up there and that was pretty awesome. But now here's another great story. But we're in Abu Dhabi. All right, I, I get to Abu Dhabi, we're at the weigh-ins, and, and you get all these fences and sheiks and all that, and there's this guy with a turban, and, and he's in the back dressing room, and I hear him talking to security that he wants Anderson Silva, you know, and then, hey, Stitch, come on, he wants to take a picture, so we take a picture, and come fight night, they just have to be sitting right behind me, all the royal family, and so I said, you know what, I'm going to do something real special for this guy, so I said, oh, Mohammed, you want to go in the back of me, I got to go rap. Uh, at that, it was, it was BJ Penn, Anderson Silva. Uh, Hensel Gracie, uh, Not too shabby. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Mark, Mark Munoz and, and Kendall Grove I had to go back and rap them. You want to go back and see what we actually do? So I took them back there, and in, in, in doing that, I'm, I'm asking them to do it. You might just kind of want your autograph. You might get it. No, no problem, too. No problem. So I said, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to wrap his hands, have Anderson sign it, cut it off, and give him the pass, right? So I told him about that, and him and his other buddy. So I wrapped both their hands, and they autographed them. And, and come fight time, the, the, the cameras are zooming into the arena, and, and they zoom by him, and he's having his hand wrapped, and he's waving it in the crowd. And my daughter says, "That's that hand, you know." <laughs> but but the guy ended up being one of the one of the princes, and he says, "Stitch, you know, thank you for everything, because I know it came from your heart, and this means so much to me." And that that's memorable, that's awesome. you know. And uh, but I got tons of stories, you know, on, on wrapping hands. And, Maybe I should wrap your hands before we I, today. Honestly, I was, as soon as you're telling that story, I'm like... 
right. All right. Well, consider it done, man. All right. Wrap your hands up. That way you can know where to build. That'd be awesome. Right. So from Forrest Griffin to Bar Marvin Eastman uh, and everyone in between, you've been involved a lot, of, if not all of the, the most you know, vicious cuts and things like that. Is there any one that stands out? Any one job where you're like, you got to the corner, you're like, all right, this might be the worst I've ever seen. Well, no, it, it, it happens just about every event. You know? <laughs> it gets but, but, you know, you give me an event, I'll give you, I'll give <laughs> yeah. you a show. But, you know, one, the Brock Lesnar, we really fucked came back. Oh, yeah. Alaska, you know, I was with Brock, and I love Brock. You know, I wrapped his hands from day one, and, and, and uh, but on this one, he ended up with a major gash, yeah. and I started working on him, and as big and manly as Brock is, you know, he's looking at me as a stitch, you know, take care of him. Don't worry about it, Brock. You know, and, and, and those are those moments, though, that I'm talking about. Like, only him and I, yeah. me and the fighter here at those specific times, you know. Vito, when he got knocked out the other day, he's asking me, whisper, what happened? So I had to tell him, Vito, you got knocked out. You know? and, and, uh, but, you know, that one that one really stands out. And uh, there's just tons, you know, tons where, where I've saved guys. Oh, uh, uh, there is a book. I know, I'm yeah, 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 man. <laughs> you got to do your homework, brother. I said, man, you really, yeah. So, but, and, and it's funny because the book did so well with so many of the great stories yeah. that people are asking for a continuation. And I think I finished like UFC 100. And I couldn't get all the stories in, so I got the shit of yeah. stories, man. And one of the days, Michelle, we'll have a couple beers and nice. sit down and just talk more stories. Yeah. Let's do that. So, what's the most fulfilling or satisfying moment you've had in a sport, or not? Like, is there just one moment you're like, this is my, this is the greatest moment I've had in a sport? Well, you know, I just had one the other day, and I got tons. I mean, really, yeah. I, I got tons of moments. And that's all what that. I'm asking all these times. Yeah. No, no, that, that's, that's <laughs> great, and, 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 and I got to bring them up like this, so <laughs> yeah. I just bring up the one that pulls up to there the top quickest, right? Sense. But I was at the uh, American Zap Dealer flight uh, last weekend, I guess two weeks ago. And Roberto Duran, my, one of my legends, right, comes up to me and he gives me a hug in Spanish. He says, you know, Stitch, I'm so proud of you that to see you working so many fights and so many times. Whether the guys win or lose, but you're working, and, and to me that makes me proud. And there's Roberto Duran telling me that, you know, and, and, and that's just one of the many, 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 many compliments I get. You know, the fans, that they come up to me and, and they give me all the accolades and all that and tell me, you know, I like the way you take care of the Fighters, you know, the fathers and the mothers that come and thank me, the husband or the wives, and say thank you for taking care of my son and my yeah. husband and all that. Those, those are the real fulfilling moments. And, you know, at this point, it's not even about the money. It's, it, money's not even in the equation. It's just, this is my dream. It's my dreams are coming true. And, and, and I'm working with every baddest fighter in the world. Absolutely. So, we'll talk about the book here for a minute. From your humble beginnings in the migrant camp, working in the fields, picking cotton and fruit, uh, to being in movies, having your own action figure, signing autographs, being known worldwide. Is there one moment you're like, just a pinch me moment, like from, from the beginnings that you talked about to now, is there just one moment you're like? And, and Michelle, does he bug you like this all the time with great questions? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, you know what, and, and once again, there's memorable moments all over the place. And, and But I, I think one that really pops up is my first time I went to Japan for a major fight with Josh Barnett. Uh, it's at the Tokyo Bell. And, and I walk in and... 70, yeah, it was like, se like 70,000 people, you know, and, and my goal was always to become a professional baseball player. But here I am walking into the Tokyo Dome where the Tokyo Giants play, and, and I walk in and I see this big old giant arena, and I look all the way up to the top of the rafters and it's loaded with people. You know, to me, I'm thinking, wow, this is one of those moments that, you know, coming in as a farm worker from Pinata, California. And, and, and the thing I look at, Tony, and I say, you know what, I hope my friends are you know, it's my family and all that, but I, I always go back to my friends that I grew up with and I said, you know, I hope you guys are proud of me. And they, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, and many people may not know this, but you have a pretty extensive background as a competitor, too. I mean, you're being focused on what you're doing now. You know, whether it be different disciplines like kickboxing, Muay Thai, and among others. Can you elaborate on that experience a bit? Like I said, I think it kind of gets pushed to the side because people see what you do now and you're so yeah. in the limelight now that they might not be aware of yeah, and, of and past as far as that Yeah, goes. a lot of people in the MMA world don't understand the background that came from, but I had a pretty extensive background. And, and uh, you know, as, as a martial artist, I was, I was very good. As a trainer, I was excellent. A lot of people don't know that I was a trainer because I was a gun man, but I had my own school and, uh, and, and I did everything, but I, I ended up in kickboxing worldwide. I was a Kind of like Greg Jackson is right now in the mixed martial arts. I would have people come from all over the world and train with me, and, and, and I, you know, gave that up. I got into boxing, and, and even boxing, I became a world class trainer, uh, and I enjoyed doing that. And uh, but my destiny and my and my passion is being a cut man because even though fighters are pain in the ass, number one, you know, they're they're, they're great guys, but they're a pain in the ass. Uh, but being a cut man, I just come in, do my stuff. 
and they appreciate what I do, and, and I like that one-on-one, -on -one, uh, yeah. where I can make a difference in the game. Here's something else, kind of touched on a little bit. The tricks of the trade in your profession have been kept a secret for so long. I know you've talked about that in the past, yeah. yet you've chose to kind of open up. I think that endears you to a lot of people. Can you elaborate on like kind of what you went through initially trying to break into the business and yeah. how you've taken it? You've got like instructionals now, things like that. Yeah, I, I, I changed the game actually. Steve Mazzagotti said it basically, you know, Stitch, you revolutionized being a cut man. But uh, the, the first time I got blown away by, by a cut man, and me asking him what he was doing, you know, he just said, you know, F you, you got to learn like me, and I'm taking it to my grave. And, and I'm thinking, wow, this is the world. This is the world. Kind of like jujitsu, like you hear that a lot of jujitsu, certain things are sacred, they won't be taught. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. Well, and, and, and it's funny, you know, I, is I try to learn off the Joe Cutman because before, the only way to learn is to observe and, and then to actually do it on the job. And, and it's, that yeah. moment right there really directed me where I'm at now. And I said, you know, I'm never going to do this. I'm a martial artist by trade. And, my trade is to teach, and, and these old cut men, as I've been instructing people, and I do it all the time, hey man, aren't you scared to take me out? And I'm thinking, well, they take my job, that's going to be better than me. You know, but there, there's a martial arts saying where if the student does better than the master, then the master's done his job, right? And uh, so, so I took it upon myself to, uh, to educate people, because as I look at the game, especially in the mixed martial arts, such a new game that, you know, like I tell a coach will teach a fighter how to fight, but nobody teaches a coach how to take care of the fighter, and that's what I specialize in. Uh, so I bring that to the table, and, and, and I don't mind you know, educating these guys. And, and once I understood the game, Tony, there's no secrets, and, and it's all proper application, and proper technique. And if you notice the cutting of the UFC, we all follow the same format, but it's basically the format that I put together. And, uh, and the guys that we have, are, they're as good as any cutman out there. And I think you know, we're the best group of guys that uh, that are out there, and, and, and we do give these kind of awards. So, uh, what's the best part about working the Red The fact that you're in it? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People say, you know, Stitch, you know, you've got like an 85% win ratio, you know. Yeah, you well, that's, you know, it's, it's, a lot of times it's not about that, but working the Red Corner, that's another good question. I'm like, I'm like, what? It's like, eight, 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 yeah, eight, yeah, so yeah, 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 that's good. But, you know, the, <laughs> I, 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 people don't understand. I work the Red Corner for two things. Number one is, is, Bert Watson is our coordinator. He coordinates everything behind the scenes. And I kind of overlook the cut man and make sure that everybody is in place and somebody's going to get relieved that, you know, you never leave your post type of thing. Always, always be on location. Uh, but but I am there to, even the cameras, when the cameras come in, the guys, like they're on Spike TV, the guy will say, you know, 20 seconds. So I got to let these guys know, you got 20 seconds, put the best lean, get the guys in, you know. And that's two of us. So, so I kind of call it that. Watson does in the background, I do up in the front, and, and I think that's, that's an interesting way to look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's how we do it. Outside of Moore, just, you know, I have these guys, these are the champs, that's not even the case. Yeah. Moore and that dictate or, or kind of pull the strings on, on how we operate in the background. See, people don't know that. So that's the first. There you go. Here, the last question I'll let you go. I'll see if I'm 10 for 10 here. Um, you mentioned often the dreams do come true and the importance of believing in those dreams. Can you elaborate on the dreams you've had over the years and how they did or didn't? Pan out the way you envisioned they would. Like well, you said, I know you said about being a baseball player, and I think playing up, and then you're still standing in the stadium with 70,000 people. So yeah, yeah. Well, in a sense. And, and, and then, and then also, my first world title fight in boxing was I worked with Tony the Tiger Lopez <coughs> when he fought another one of the Mexican legends, Julio Cesar Chavez, in Monterey, Mexico. And this was in the baseball field. So as as I get there, you know, I'm in the dugout and I <laughs> kind of put my foot up there. You know how the baseball players do that? Yeah. Right? I was in the deck circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is what it would have felt like, right? But you know, during those moments, I, I always knew I was going to be a professional or something. I just didn't know what I was going to be at. And lo and behold, I mean, this world is a world that never even knew existed. And, and and here I am, and you know, doing interviews with you in Philadelphia. And uh, so it doesn't get much better than that. But, uh, you know, I tell people, you know, follow your dreams because dreams do come true. And and you know, there's there's a formula to that. And and, and I think anybody in success. You follow that same formula, and there's stumbling blocks anywhere we go. Sure. And and the thing is, that you just got to life out of that. And, you know, like I tell my children, you know, so when you do things in life, you pretend that big pillar is a redwood tree. You know, you have an action. Every time you hit it, you take a chunk away from the tree. Well, it's not going to go right away, you know, but you can't stop.
stop and you got to continue, 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 and eventually that tree falls and, and those are the things that come through. So, so I've been very fortunate to, to be where I'm at and have people recognize me literally all over the world. Here I am, I get off at the airport, I'm a baggage man, and, and this cop comes up to me, a Philly cop. Oh my God. He says, Stick, how you doing? I'm a big fan of yours. I see you on TV all the time. I'm Smitty. I said, oh, Smitty, how you doing? Well, I'm glad you stopped me for this and nothing else, you know. But, but, <laughs> yes. but to have a cop just come out from, from his duties and come and, and, and say that they acknowledge everything that I do and all that, uh, you know, those those are the dreams that are still coming true for me. And, and I think it's pretty awesome. Last question I have you. Do you want to say before we sign off? Or uh, well, no. Did you want me to wrap your hand? I do. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to have to run upstairs. Nice. We're going to stop the video. We'll be back for that. All right.